right, it is a beautiful Saturday. If you love sunshine and you love good temps, then that's what it is today. But for us, what it is today is hopefully we are going to get a ton, a ton of stuff done. Uh, this morning I hit the store and got us a filter so we can change the spin on filter. I haven't changed it. I was gonna do first start up on the old filter just to make sure uh, any th trash that was in the line goes ahead and fills up that filter and not a brand new filter. But I'm on the fence. I don't know what I'm going to do. But I, they didn't have the XP. I've been running the Wix XP. They had the racing, the Wix racing brand. Now, I posted this on my Facebook and asked for opinions on it. Basically, it's a high, way higher flow rating. And I don't think it filters as much material. But there's a lot of other racers that commented on it. Uh, on my Facebook and said that they've had absolutely no issues out of that filter. So being it has a higher flow rating, we are going to be, I think, running that filter in the future. Let me know in the comments what you think about the Wix racing filter. Uh, TKM's one told me to run like a Wix filter, XP, something like that. Um, and so that's what I've always ran, but the racing seems like it's even a better option, especially for racing. So we hit the metal yard this morning real fast and just grabbed a couple odds and ends, literally $2 uh, worth of metal. That's Pretty cool to have Southern Metals here. a little here. sleeve for the bolt for our water pump bracket that we built. Um, and so I went over there and just grabbed some. I was picking up my daughter anyway. And we're gonna put a sleeve on this bolt right here. Cause right now this bracket just slides around like that. So I guess we're gonna take this water pump off. Uh, I was working on my line layout, but that's what we wanna kinda do next. I think is get the water lines, the two water lines done, pick up where we left off in the last video is completing the coolant system. And so I need to shorten these little spacers in here and do that bracket. All right, so working on routing out this uh, coolant line and it is going to be, what you got? Yeah, where'd you get that? Out of mommy's car? Yeah, mommy left it in there. Mommy left it in there? Yeah. And I'm guessing that you want it. Yeah. <laughs> do you think mommy will let you have that? Yeah. You should go ask her. She's upstairs. Okay, go inside and yell upstairs if you can have the lollipop. Yeah, because you know that she's probably going to say no. Yeah. It's over there by the door. It's in the box. Yeah, just put it in a box. Good job. All right, one lollipop later, and we are going to work on these coolant lines and run them. Now, there's really no good way to get this coolant line back there away from heat sources. Uh, no matter if we go left or right, we have heat. Now, obviously, going left this way has more heat because of the downpipe. Going right. That way has less heat because we only have one exhaust header, but then we have to basically wrap around and then get back over there. So it's still longer travel, more weight, more water, more coolant, which uh, I guess having more water capacity in the vehicle is not a bad thing, um, but that's still, we have fuel lines over here. I don't feel like it is in our best interest to go this way. So unfortunately, we're gonna have to come this way. So we'll wrap it around like that. I've just zip tied it up from mock up so I can get my length. And then we're gonna hit the tabs that I had already laid out. Now I wanted to go down here, across this bar under the control arm like we did on the other side with the fuel lines and then right here. But when you start to make these tight bends with this hose right here, pretty quickly it just wants to kink like that. Um, so there's no real good, excellent way also to get it through here and not kink it or not chance it kinking and also clearance of the tire when you get the tire on here the tire is decently up inside here at one point i actually had to beat these uh pinch welds over uh because the car with the tires were scrubbing on that when i had a little bit larger of a tire on here than 26 i think i had 27 on the front um and it was hitting that so we kind of don't want to go through there either uh just because it's already clearly tight and I was like, man, we can route it through here, but the fender goes there. So just, just trust me, I've laid out every way possible and there's just no real good way to do it. So unfortunately, no matter how much I don't want to go up like this, we're gonna have to, and I think I will look into possibly getting a heat sheet, sheet or heat blanket shield sleeve to go on from here all the way to there maybe. Uh, I'll have to spec out that size. We're gonna go ahead and cover it with the sleeve, just a normal sleeve. And what that will allow us to do is that will also show us basically until I get the sleeve, I hope to get the sleeve like today, but, or order it. But something like this will show us if it's getting too hot, that will start melting. And then you can tell that you're probably getting too hot. And then it's gonna kind of be working not as efficient because then you're heating up your cooler water that you're trying to get back into 
uh, the engine. So we want to definitely put some kind of heat protective or heat sleep over that if possible. So, all right, so on our lines, I got one made up and I'm about to show y'all how I do it just in case you're wondering. Um, so we got the simple 90 here and then we have a, a worm clamp and then the braiding goes over the lines and another worm cap clamp. Now that one could have been a little bit longer, but it is what it is. So I'm going to show you how I make this just in case you're wondering because it gets rid of a lot of the blue. It gives it a nice, for me, it gives it a nice subtle look that matches good with the engine. So what I've done is we're using this braiding. Um, can't remember it right now, top of my head. You know, basically this is what it looks like. And when you get it, it's almost like this small. So it looks smaller, but then when you push it in, it gets bigger. So you basically push it in like that. Okay. And then that opens up the end of it really big so that you can slip the hose in and then you just keep working it in. It's like one of these Chinese finger traps. So you just keep on working it on, pushing it down. Um, I've got it so that it is almost to the end, but it's not, it's like an inch away from the end. Probably should be a little bit more, but it's probably going to stretch a lot. And now all we're going to do, is we're going to take this end right here and we're just going to cut it right where the end of the hose is pretty much. By leaving that slack on that end down there, that allows me to push this end back now and get us where we need to be. So we're going to take the lighter. We're just going to melt the ends to keep it from raveling, from raveling too much. And now we're going to push this on there some more like that. And I'm going to slide all the slack down here to right there to the end. That's where I wanted that. I might actually have to cut some more off. Hopefully not. We'll see. No, look at that. So that's like literally pretty much perfect. All right, so now we need to work a worm clamp on there. And them guys look like this. I had originally bought a kit on eBay, but they look like that. They got this little piece right on there that you uh, crimp. I'll show you that here in a second. Where's my tool at? So the tool almost looks like nail pullers or something. It literally, you take that and then it will go over it like that. Let's see here. And you'll squeeze that together and I'll tighten it down. Um, now this diameter right here, I'll have to put the size on the screen right here because it took me a while to figure that out. It's very tight with uh, this insulation on there. So it's, you have to definitely work it and make sure that it doesn't, the sleeve doesn't hang up too bad on it, kind of spin it because it's going to destroy the sleeve. All right, so then we're just going to run it up to the other side. My workbench is already getting pretty full. Cleaned everything up the other week. <laughs> now I got everything laid up on this workbench, which is fine because hopefully by the end of the day, we won't have much left up here. All right. And then sometimes you have to slide this stuff back because the worm clamp will want to push it. Up. So I'll come right here to the end, pretty much. <clears throat> like almost literally to the end. And take your crimpers, squeeze it. And tighten it down. And I just started recently doing this like this. Putting the crimp on. The last ones that I had done, I had put some Tesla tape on. Tesla tape. To finish it off, uh, something that looks really freaking good is heat shrink. So if you can buy heat shrink big enough to go over the sleeve, and then the trick would be getting worm clamps big enough to go over the heat shrink. If you could do that, then that would look really phenomenal. But that's a pretty good end result right there. Looks really good. Now the next trick is going to be you got to put your worm clamp on. Okay, now you got to get it on before you forget. It's kind of like making brake lines. Um, and then we have to put our 90 on, and then we have to put the hose on the car so we can index it because this is not swivel ends. So if you have swivel ends and it won't matter, but these are the cheaper ones that are not swivel ends. So let's go put this on the car 
and that way I can figure out which way the 90 turns and then we'll crimp that in and we'll be done. All right, so that's how it ends up. Not bad at all. Uh, I changed it, of course, after I mapped it all out, but it still worked out perfectly fine. I just want to keep it away from all of this heat as much as I can. Um, so instead of running up, like I originally did like that, because it's like when I flipped on this tab, it was either close to that side or close to that side. And I was just like, man, let's just leave them tabs alone for wires and whatever we have to run down there. And let's just make this thing make a natural sweep, hit a zip tie there, hit a couple zip ties here, and that should be fine. She's all nice and uh, secured. We need to tighten them up right there. And then our water lines are good to go. When Brandon gets here in here in a little bit, he's got the spacer for the water pump mount. So we'll be able to throw that on and then the water system is done. And man, I was about to say, we could just about go ahead and bleed it off. All right, so fuel pressure regulator, the vacuum on it, I moved it to underneath here, uh, straight off of the intake. I had a couple of people recommend that that should be pulled straight off the intake. That's pretty important. So straight off the intake now is a fuel pressure sensor and then our five bar sensor um, down there, straight off the intake. Everything else is gonna get pulled off of the block. Uh, that's just how it's gonna be whether it's the wastegates or the blow valves or anything that needs vacuum is all gonna get pulled off of the block besides them two items. And when I refer to the block, I'm referring to a vacuum block that is touched back, tucked back there in case you're new to the channel. All right, I'm even gonna be a big boy and be responsible and put in some motor oil in my filter before putting it on the car. Half the time I would just throw it on the car and send it. Uh, the oil that we're running this time is gonna be Brad Penn 10W40. Now I basically price shopped on this stuff. Um, I was gonna run straight 50 weight, uh, you know, just a uh, SAE 50. And then there was a couple other options. I ran everything through TKM, my engine builder to make sure on my motor oil options what I can pick, but basically this was the best bang for the buck that I could get on eBay or Amazon out of all the other motor oil. So I don't really run oil based on a preference. Uh, I get, you know, three or four selections that TKM says I can run basically, or they approve. And then I basically price shop. So this is what we're running this time. I've ran this in the past, a 10W40. I think the engine was actually on 10W40. Uh, Schaefer's, I think it was, whenever we blew it up the first time. So, uh, and it ran for a long time with no oil pressure. So good stuff. And I've ran Shavers and Brad Penn back and forth. Um, I just, this time I got a better bang for the buck. So let's put some oil in the filter, our new filter. Let's put our filter on and we're gonna check that off our to-do list. All right, so this is what I had done for my front tree. My front tree has all the wiring on it, as you can see right there for the headlights. So there's a whole harness that stays on the tree uh, that has to do with just headlights and all that. That way that when the tree comes out, all the headlight wiring's out of the way. To plug that tree in, I use this connector right here, uh, this little square connector. Now this thing sucks to cut, flat out sucks to cut because you have to cut a square. So you can't use like a whole saw traditionally. However, this thing right here was not expensive at all. And what I like about this is I built it on the bench. So I've got about a one foot pigtail on the other side. And so I've done my pins and everything. I didn't have to lay underneath the dash. And so anytime I make changes, I just take the whole piece out. You notice right here, that's where it goes up through that's the other end of the pigtail and then the car plugs in right there. So that's just a one foot piece that's a pass through that allows me again, not to have to work on it on the firewall. If I need to repin or move something around, I can unscrew these four screws. The car's always been like this since I changed, do these four screws and put it on the bench and repin it, not have to do it in the car. Super nice. Um, this connector, I don't remember the name of it, don't remember the information of it, don't remember anything. Can't even point you in the right direction but I got this thing off to eBay for a really good price. It was not expensive at all um, because all the other connector that you normally see everybody using, like things that like Devin uses and stuff like that, like that stuff is just flat out expensive, man. Um, you know, wires like this, this is gonna be for the water uh, pump. It's always been wired. I had a hole right here, I opened it up more. I need to order, you know, some kind of rubber to protect through there. But I just, I just run that stuff through, man. Like I don't have the money to be, freaking putting in a bunch of bulkhead connectors, that stuff gets expensive. So we're moving on right here. We're gonna strip this brake system down of uh, pretty much everything so I can kind of see what I have, and then we will rebuild it in this general area and then see what I need to order.
All right, so there's my end result. I'm not super thrilled with it. Honestly, there is a ton going on. This is the fire suppression system, um, you know, which is already here. This stuff is really hard to get a tight radius out of, near impossible. And then this stuff right here, you know, it's laid out the best that I can get it within reason without basically having to spend money. So I reused all lines I have. I literally purchased nothing to change this up and to get rid of the line lock and all that. Um, and just kind of remapped out, like you see, and I had to build this piece and then I had to build this uh, loop right here because this is again, my brake pressure sensor. So this tells the brake lights when to come on. So I needed to keep that in the system. I looked for a four way one that maybe a bolt bolted through the center, but I couldn't find anything that uh, worked or looked like it even remotely worked. And then the brake line just kind of wraps around over there. I'd rather have a 90, but then I'd have to, I don't know, buy the 90 and order shorter lines possibly. So I'm just trying to make things work, man, and not run up my debt more than I already am. Uh, trying to make stuff work. That's uh, That side's a lot cleaner, a lot happier with that side. But this side just has a lot going on. There's a lot going on here. Uh, this would be an area that you would be better to put this inside the car. But again, when the fender's on, you cannot see this at all. It's 100% behind the fender. But the good news is that if it leaks, it doesn't leak inside the car. It just drips right here on this and then drips down onto the ground. So also easy to work on sitting right here uh, when you have an aggravating leak or something versus it being way up underneath the dash. All right, so Brandon brought us our transmission block. Now he made this, originally we were gonna go with a solid piece but he didn't have the exact size he needed, so he just made this up. This thing is really thick. When he sent me a picture of it, I was like, man, that thing's gonna collapse. I was kind of thinking, but he said it was thick and that it was just as strong. And now that I see it in person, he was definitely 100% right. So Brandon's over here helping. My dad actually showed up for this afternoon for dinner and is giving us a hand. We got the uh, blow-off valves on. We just gotta run to the shop and get the uh, pieces for the push lock and then right now brandon's figuring out the back pressure piece to it and i'm gonna throw in the cross member and then we are literally pretty much i think down to wiring and putting trans fluid gas and oil in this thing to start it up like that is literally here very soon is all it's gonna be holding us back is just a couple wires all right so brandon is welding up the little dump pieces we just kept it very simple on these some of y'all had asked in a previous video, there was a comment brought up of why he did not back purge basically the same exact thing that he's doing now. Um, he said that the flanges on these, these V-band flanges are so thick that they're not gonna burn through. So when they don't burn through, that means you don't get no sugaring on the back, right, Brandon? Like, yeah, cause I mean, it, it won't burn through. Like, and that's where the people back purge because of the sugaring on the back. Mm -hmm. So since these are thick, is that right? My yeah, thinking it's got you know it's got a little bevel you can, it sits in there pretty well and you're yeah. trying not to burn through i mean sometimes you'll get a little bit but on something like this the flanges are so thick they take all the heat and all the filler so um, the issue the reason why people back purge is because it burns through and then it has no protection on the back yeah, side and then it oxidizes on the back and that's when you get sugar and like oh we could okay so if we don't burn through yeah yeah i mean you get that on the back side and while you, you know it's not the end of the world yeah. it will develop cracks with heat and stuff over time but technically if you don't burn through on a piece then there's no reason to back purge because there's nothing to protect because the weld's not on the back side yeah gotcha so there's your answer i know that somebody had asked that and so that's the same reason why obviously there's no back purging or nothing on these little pieces these are just the little dumps um I had kind of wanted to do something crazy and fancy with it, but it was just my setup. It's just not, it's just not there, man. Like I have, my lower valence is plastic. It's a, a rear bumper. We've covered that in the past. It's a 19, I think 99 Buick Century. Uh, rear bumper flipped upside down and modified. I've got two videos, I think, on doing that front valence, making that. Um, and the lip, the chin spoiler is off of, I think, a Volkswagen Passat. I did a video on that also. Uh, so everything's plastic down there. And so that high heat, you know, running these things out the side, we don't have a lot of real estate here. They'd have to go in the front of it. And uh, we just decided it's just, it's, it's more stuff than is needed. There's kind of no reason to uh, run them. Uh, Brandon did a killer job on this piece right here. I don't even know how he does this. He did this by hand <laughs> right here, which is ordinary stuff in the garage while I was putting the cross member in underneath the car. Uh, he basically just hand wrapped this around a tube, like a roll bar like this, and then just put his bins in it. And 
got that hooked up. That's gonna be your back pressure uh, canister. So we are down to literally like the last pieces of the mechanic side. The only other thing that we have to weld, um, which I am 100% capable of doing is the support rod. So I gotta go from here up to here. It's gonna be a bolt on piece. I need to just mig up a little rod for that with two eyelets on the ends. And then there's one more thing. Oh, I need to do the MIG, do the um, shock plates uh, the, for, to mount the shocks. I got to build them, but that's not super important. And we're kind of chasing startup right now. Um, we could technically start it right now. We could go put fuel in it, trans fluid in it, and motor oil in it. And it should start just like it is, but it is Saturday afternoon and there's kind of no reason to rush it. So, and to be that guy in the neighborhood uh, with the car running this late so uh we're gonna do that on sunday so this video y'all see this video sunday morning um your monday video should be first startup and we'll get this thing tomorrow i'll work into the night running some wires and stuff and then we should get this thing started on uh your monday video my sunday the throttle cable somebody is going to comment on that i know the comments are coming this is coming back off this is not right so this is what i used to have and i did not have a quarter or a half inch to spare like this thing was dead on like there was nothing to spare on the length but since we have lifted the motor two inches now it's just simply too tight and we can't get this piece right here in there um, and to get the correct dive on this piece I had to build this bracket it's just uh, it's a funky setup you can you can flip this I used to have this piece flipped on this side but then I had built a bracket right here um, because when you flip it, now instead of pulling from the top like this, now you have to pull it from the bottom. And being I have these water lines and fuel rails, everything in a race, especially the water line, uh, it gets really hard uh, to do, basically. And I definitely don't want a chance flipping it now because I'm not 100% if this V-band on the throttle body side is welded symmetrical. So since we don't have no flex, uh, it might not work very good. So I've got to source a longer throttle cable uh basically for this to keep it kind of like it is i want to remake this piece and let it sit a little bit more natural but we need a longer cable that's going to come up probably go through the intake and then up on this side in a straight line we kind of want to come out like an s and then go up you want your throttle cable obviously flowing as smooth as possible because you don't want this thing to get stuck and at the angle that it is right now it would literally saw through that in no time and it could possibly get hung up at wide open throttle uh, so I understand somebody's gonna comment that that throttle cable is dangerous or whatever but uh it's not it's not done this is getting changed all right figured i should probably stop and update y'all as you can see we're running into the night hours another weekend of pretty much working through the whole freaking weekend of saturday night and i have made leaps and bounds like i keep saying it but we are literally almost down to the wiring like there is like hardly nothing freaking left on this thing we still have to do the suspension and some trim rings around this on the bumper some odds and ends but uh as you can see we have transmission fluid and race gas over there for first start up tomorrow as long as i'm not tied up testing with john uh which i hope to be testing with john i hope that he can get some testing in at kinston and not all the way at piedmont but we'll see what happens with that so i'm literally just running freaking lines dude uh the blow off valves are all plumbed they go back to our vacuum block again on our uh, wall back there let's see here i think i have one port left maybe or two i have two ports left back there that i don't think are going to get used um they may they may not uh we'll probably just plug them for right now uh that's i just wanted to go ahead and put them in and have enough since they're hard to get to back there we'll just route a line that loops them together no biggie but we have got all of the gates plumb down here and done we've got the springs in them we've got our pipes down here now of course looking at this now of course it slightly bothers me i wish we would have just went with a straight on both of them um i do like the curve more kind of i feel like i don't know the straight looks pretty gangster uh but me and brandon decided to do the curve first and then out of just pure laziness and not wanting to cut up another piece honestly we just took the straight scrap and i kind of cut it at the same angle as that one and rock and rolled with it honestly that is literally how the decision was made but now looking at it man the straight on that one would be gangster but it gives me motivation to learn how to tig so i can make little tiny changes like that on my own 
perfectly fine right now. It's going to be all covered up when it goes together. Uh, so we've got all of these ran nice and neat. This stuff is important to me to make sure all the lines are ran nice and neat. I'll spend time changing a line, whether it lays on this side of the bar or this side of the bar, whether it goes under the bar, on top of the hose, stuff like that. I will spend some serious time doing this, and that's the reason why I put in so many freaking hours is making sure the stuff's right. I'm also starting to, uh, if you notice, let's see here, you see how that zip tie wraps around? See how that zip tie wraps around? So uh, I'm also starting to develop a really bad habit of when I do zip ties like this and you look down something that my zip ties are all lassoed in the same direction uh, to make zip ties as clean as possible. So we got that one ran all the way up here, that put in. I think we are literally like this area right here I think we're done. We got to have a couple zip ties on our oil feed line. We did get in the mail the um, heat fiberglass protective piece for that line right there. And then we're going to zip tie the feed line to that one and to the rack. I need to go ahead and do that while the blanket and zip ties and everything are right here. And then I believe that this front is done. I believe. Crazy, crazy close. Uh, about to start actually busting out some wires and running some pigtails off of these pieces. Somebody recommended um, that we need to put rubber in here, between here, so I'll probably go ahead and loosen that up, slap a piece of rubber between this and the mount to give it a little bit, of, uh, a little bit of so it's not shock the sensor. You know, the vibration on these sensors are bad, uh, and that's the reason why a lot of people mount them remotely like that up there. Speaking of remotely mounted sensors, I 100% dropped the ball on that one, and, Felt like that's what I wanted to do. And now that everything is coming together, it is 100% not in use as of right this second. Now, I'll probably definitely, as the car grows, will add some pretty trick sensors I'm thinking to here, whether it's uh, vacuum measurement or whether it's brake pressure to see how much I was on the brakes, you know, or whatever. Coolant pressure is already in the radiator back there in the back, it's just not wired. We'll definitely use that block. We'll fill it up with some data. But right now, I don't think it's gonna use. I wanted my wastegate, the dome pressure sensor right here and a line ran to it. And then after talking to John on the phone today, uh, shout out to Turbo John Racing on YouTube because he has, uh, you know, he has helped me out a tremendous amount with this thing. I really, really, really greatly appreciate my friends that are around me, Brandon for coming through on this welding. I mean, just phenomenal. Brandon come over earlier as you've seen and welded them up, hung out for a while, ate dinner and kicked in. It's so nice to be, you know, uh, back hanging out with Brandon because we used to hang out with him. He's just super talented and such a good guy. So it's nice to have them type of people around. Uh, but just everybody, Randy, you know, he has took care of me tremendously at the racetrack from helping me get the Hans device on or making sure I'm lined up. You know, I feel comfortable in all aspects of this, um, and I feel very confident in all aspects of this. And I don't question much at all. I don't question the racing side of things. You know, Randy, John, all of them, you know, tremendously just help make sure everything runs smooth at the track. And then John, any questions I have, he tells me what I need to do and run it. So I don't second guess if, you know, it's ran right or if it's nothing like that. It's pretty much like I ask these people and what they say, I feel very confident in that answer. So I just wanna take one moment out of this video to thank these guys and give a shout out for everything that these people do to, uh, for me. Um, I greatly appreciate it. Uncle Mike uh, come through on the alignment last time. He's gonna come and help me with the alignment again. So I greatly appreciate him and just the time he has put into these control arms because little annoying things like tapping the ball joints and stuff, like these guys are just really good guys and they need a really big thank you or whatever they they honestly really do if y'all can drop in the comments if they catch this video they can check the comments just shout out a thank you you know on my part to them because uh i greatly appreciate them helping us make this happen but we are pretty much uh let's see here we've got our line to our boost control valve or solenoid whatever that's called so then that's just got to go in the car there the wiring's got to go in the car from there uh, we need to plug the solid state relay back in. That's going to go in the car. That may get moved, honestly. When we start wiring, depending on... I, I don't 100% understand where the wires go on this, so I can't 100% know if I want to keep it here or not. It don't make no sense if all the wires go to the back of the car. We might as well just put it back there somewhere uh, if there's room or find room. So we'll see what happens with that and where that one goes. But besides that, dude, we're, we're gonna run some pigtails and start stabbing wires in the car. And then I don't know how much of the wiring I'll get done myself, uh, but Brandon said that he will help me. And so 
Uh, I can definitely just get them dumped inside the car. That way, basically, we're working in the car. I think literally all I have to do wiring rise is run the back pressure and then the dome pressure sensor. Um, I think that's it. To get the wiring in the car, we're going to use these uh, that I showed in a previous video, but just in case you're new to the channel, Low Dollar Motorsport sells these. They're already terminated on the end. How cool is that? Rubber boot, everything. Plug that freaking thing in and run the wires to the inside, and then all you have to do is take care of your three wires right there. That is freaking it. They come in 10 foot runs. I'm not sponsored by them. I didn't get it for free. I paid full price for them. Actually, I think they were on sale when I ordered them, but I paid you know, the price that was listed on the website. But if you don't like wiring no more than I like wiring, this is amazing. I can do wiring, but I don't want to. So we're gonna plug it in and shoot it in the car. 